folks, this is Jake with Seattle Coffee here, and today we're gonna to be comparing some alternative milk choices in the Philips Latte Go machines. Now, we've done alternative milks in the past and some tips and tricks on how to steam that, but we wanted to see how they worked in Philips' newer Latte Go system and to see if they can hold up to what we normally see when we're steaming alternative milk and also how it just compares to uh, dairy milk as well. So the lineup that we have here, um, these are all unsweetened. I, I prefer unsweetened alternative milk, so that's what we went for here. We have uh, unsweetened almond milk, uh, unsweetened oat milk, then soy milk, as well as coconut milk. Now, there's definitely lots of other options that are available out on the market. A couple that we typically stay away from in just any steaming application are things like rice milk and hemp milk. They're, when they foam, it basically doesn't foam up at all. They're, they're very thin and watery. But if it's something that you enjoy the taste of, you know, and if you just want it warmed up, it does great. But if you're looking for that like cappuccino or latte style foam, those two typically don't do so well. And then there are also barista versions of a lot of these milks out on the market. Um, those typically contain thickeners or stabilizing agents to make it foam up more like dairy milk. We're not using those today because we just wanted to use what most people would have in their fridge at home if they do um, prefer alternative milks. So we have the Carina Latte Go here and the 4300 Latte Go here. Um, we're just using two different machines because we want to use two Latte Goes at the same time. I'm going to be doing the cappuccino setting, just medium settings all the way around, same grind size, same amount of ground coffee in each. We just want to do uh, as best of an apples to apples comparison as we can. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to put the coconut milk on the 4300 and then the soy milk onto the Korean Latte Go. And then for here, we're going to select cappuccino, default setting for the amount of ground coffee, same with the amount of espresso, and then same with the amount of milk. We get that started. So they both now just ground their beans, so they're going to be ready to brew and then steam. Or steam then brew on the cappuccino, excuse me. All right, so we have two very short cappuccinos, which is actually interesting to me. It seems like the thickness of the milk may have created um, less milk to be dispensed, especially on the 4300 with the coconut milk. Uh, as you can see, quite a short drink, not a lot of foam, uh, not a lot of head, so to say. But in comparison, the soy milk seems to have stood up quite well. You can see that there's a lot of foam up top. Looks like a good cappuccino. Again, they're both shorter than I was expecting. The, they were both set to three ounces of milk, 3.4 ounces of milk actually. Um, but it looks like that we got a little bit less out of those. So if you're using these alternative milks, either soy or coconut, I might up the milk volume to get the expected volume out. But let's give these a taste. So I'm gonna start with coconut milk. It's always hard to avoid the obvious with coconut milk and that it does provide quite a strong flavor. 
to your drink. If you already like coconut milk in your coffee and that's what you're doing with like a drip brew or even like in your, you know, anything that you're getting at a cafe, it works pretty well. You're not going to make latte art with this coconut milk, but, um, you know, it does taste pretty good. The foam doesn't really hold up, but I still think it does make a nice tasting drink. And then for the soy milk, Definitely a lot nicer foam on the top there. Um, and it's a pretty fine foam too. I don't know if you can see it, but it is a relatively fine foam. It looks like it's dispersing pretty quickly, but it's still holding up after you know the minute or so I've been talking. Um, and I say that does a pretty good job. And I, and I do like the, the taste of soy milk in coffee. So yeah, I'd say the latte go, soy milk is definitely a, a really good option. All right, so I'm gonna set these aside. This is the nice part about having four latte go crafts. It makes it pretty easy to switch in and out. All right, so we got the oat milk and the almond milk and we're gonna do the same settings as before. All right, we're ready. So I'm gonna start with the oat milk on this side. Um, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, I do like oat milk and just general steaming applications. It tends to hold up pretty well. As we can see here, the foam is a little thinner than I was expecting, but it does seem to be at least present, so that's good. So yeah, and it's a, it's a good drink with, with oat milk, this cappuccino. Um, unlike the coconut milk, I noticed that, so we had it on the same settings, and unlike the coconut milk, it did seem to dispense about three ounces rather than, I think we probably only got two ounces on the coconut milk on the three ounce setting. They're really calibrated for like dairy 2% milk, so that might be why um, the coconut milk might be a little thicker, a little harder to siphon up. And then the almond milk. Uh, almond milk, this is what I would typically expect as well with almond milk. It's a bit of a thinner foam that disperses rather quickly. Um, you know, as expected with any steaming method in almond milk, although, um, you know, it's holding up all right. And one of the big reasons I don't personally like almond milk in my coffee is because I don't like the taste of almond milk in coffee. But if you are a person that does like it, I think it does a really good job. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's like the coconut milk where it's imparting a, a, a lot of flavor in my opinion. Um, you know, but if it's your thing, I say go for it because both these, uh, almond milk and the oat milk worked out pretty well. Um, I would actually go with a little bit more volume on each to start getting a little more frothing action. I think that would help out a lot. Now, if we compare it to, you know, what we've seen from dairy milk, all four of these milks do tend to have a little bit less foam and that's to be expected. You know, these are all out of the fridge given their best opportunity, but 
because they don't have a lot of fat or most of them don't have a lot of fat and pretty low in protein as well for some of them. Um, you know, it does make it difficult to get those microphone bubbles that you are expecting. But no matter what the latte go, you know, seems like it's up to the up to the task as long as the milk that you're using is up to the task. Make sure to adjust your volumes for the amount of milk froth. You know, you can adjust this. Um, like if you have a Carina Latte Go, you can adjust it manually with the adjustment button. If you have the 4300 series uh, Latte Go, you can just select your milk volume right from the menu. Um, I would up it a little bit higher than what you typically go to get this, the right amount of milk out of them. But I think overall my favorite here actually would be the soy milk in terms of how it um, produced, you know, a nice foam and a really nice cup of coffee. And then second favorite, I think, would be oat milk, and then almond milk, and then last but not least, coconut milk. Um, you know, I didn't have high hopes for coconut milk, but, you know, if it's uh, your favorite alternative milk, go ahead, put it in, and it will do, you know, a pretty decent job. Now, the one thing that we do want to note here is that if you're making homemade uh, nut milk, you know, like almond milk or cashew milk or something like that, those are going to be too thick for the latte go. We have tried, you know, homemade almond milk before in in the latte go systems, and they just tend to be too thick, you know. And if you if you have to water it down, then you're basically, you know, you're not going to get much foam because then you're losing whatever protein content or fat content you already had that helps with the foaming um, of the milk itself. So something pre-produced that's filtered. Um, and or the barista series ones that do have those additional stabilizers and or extra protein content um, will do extra well, but you know, the store-bought regular old unsweetened brands do pretty well as well. So we just want to thank you for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you next time. Okay.